Hi everybody, it's Friday, the 29th of January 2021. I am Thekla Petridou, a psychologist, YouTuber and author, and this is our weekly video in English. Today's subject is, um, was given to me by a man who wanted to ask and understand better his approach of his girlfriend towards him. He told me, he wrote to me in an email, that he's in a romantic relationship with a woman who is around 26, 27 years old. He's older, he's like 35 years old. And um, they are having difficulties in their relationships, in their relationship. Uh, at the beginning, when they started having uh, fights and um, not uh, having a good time in their relationship, his girlfriend criticized him for his narcissistic behavior, as she put it. She told him that he needs to go into therapy, that he is being very selfish, egocentric, etc. He wrote to me that he followed her advice. She found himself, he found himself a therapist and he started doing therapy, psychotherapy in order to improve his own weaknesses. I think he's been on therapy for a couple of months and uh, he wrote to me, while I am on therapy, I start to realize my issues, to realize my weaknesses and uh, I'm doing my best to overcome my difficulties. On the other hand, almost, on the other hand though, <laughs> spoken Greek, I do came to realize, I did came to realize my, weak, my strengths and I realized that this man I am able to be in a relationship. I am able to, to live with a woman and uh, trust her. And I realized that my girlfriend has a lot of difficulty in trusting me and any other man. Uh, he told me that his girlfriend grew up in a very controversial family environment. Her father uh, was married to her mother and he had his own family. They had a family together, they lived together. But at the same time, for many years, I don't know how many, maybe 10, 15, 20 years, her father had another relationship parallel to his marriage. His mother knew that he had another life, another uh, girlfriend, another woman that he went to be with her. He had two parallel relationships, two parallel families. And this controversial environment was the environment where his girlfriend grew up. Uh, she, her father uh, was uh, cheating on her mother. The relationship between the couple was tense, the original couple, the ma her mother and the, the, her father. She and the child, she felt that her father was untrustworthy because he wasn't uh, um, uh, devoted to his family, to his wife and to his children. He left the house often to go and be with his uh, other woman. Um, I don't know if he had any children with the other woman. I don't know this. I don't know about this. But the, the main issue was that he had two parallel relationships, his marriage and another relationship. Her mother uh, didn't divorce him uh, due to financial reasons, but she had a lot of bitterness inside, as it is very natural to be, to be bitter about a husband who is not uh, loyal to you, who cheats on you with another woman, who daily with his actions shows you that he doesn't love you and he's not there, you are not enough for him. And um, this young woman, she grew up not to trust men, uh, she had um, another uh, relationship before this relationship with the man who sent the email, a marriage that was um, uh, a non-traditional marriage. She was married to somebody, they had two children together, but um, they had an open marriage. I mean, she never trusted him uh, and she told him from the beginning that uh, I don't want you to be loyal, I don't want you to be, uh, to be uh, only with me, you can be with whomever else you wish. We have the family here. I mean, she tried to reproduce the model of her own family. 
And at the end, she fell in love with this man that sent the email to me. She divorced her husband um, and she, they tried to be together. He, her, her children and him. But as the man who sent the email wrote to me, she is not able to trust him. She is always very keen on pointing out on his own uh, weaknesses, on his own mistakes in behavior. But even if he tries to become better, even if he goes to therapy, even if he uh, changed his behavior and he tried tries and he became more empathetic towards her and her children, she is still rejective of him. And he told me, he wrote to an email to me, please make a video uh, to advise this woman and any other woman that she had an untrustworthy father, that she grew up in an environment where her father was not trustworthy and her mother was very bitter about his father. And she, um, the, the, the relationship of her parents was a toxic relationship and her mother could not trust her father how could this woman when she's an adult and she faces difficulties in her love relationships how can she obtain the ability to trust a man that is worth it of course the man who sent the email he believes about himself that he's worth to be in a relationship with I don't know the man. <laughs> I don't know whether he's trustworthy or not, but I really do thank him for the opportunity to make this video because it is true that uh, our parents' relationship is uh, pl plays a very important role on how we are able to connect with other people. Our emotional connectivity depends big time on the role model that we had of their of our parents' uh, marriage or relationship with each other or their relationships with their partner, because some people might have grown up in an, in a family that it was um, the partner of their mother is not their father, but it was a stepfather. But they had a good uh, relationship with each other, the mother and the stepfather, and they had a positive uh, role uh, image or someone, uh, somebody else might have uh, grown up in a family where um, they are with their father and their stepmother. And um, the relationship of that couple is a plays a major impact on how they view relationships, how they view prospective partners, how they view um, this issue of trust, if I can trust somebody. Uh, when you trust somebody, you actually make a leap of faith. I have this opinion uh, based on my professional experience and my clinical experience and my studies and even my personal life that um, some people are more trustworthy than others, but we can never be sure who is trustworthy or not. We need to check. We need to take risks in order to um, find out whether this person I met in my life, this person I felt emotionally and romantically attracted to and we started a relationship with is someone to trust or not. The same goes for men as well. Many men that had bad relationship with their mothers or their father was a misogynistic person who accused their mother of being untrustworthy or uh, children that have been the victim of parental alienation towards their mother they might have difficulty trusting women and having these stereotypical ideas in their brain that all women are not to be trusted, that women are dangerous, that women can break your heart, that women are not easy to understand and that men should be afraid of women. The same goes for women. Women who believe that men are uh, untrustworthy, that men can ruin your life, that men can... Um, be bad partners, they can break your heart, they can betray you, so you are afraid of them and you try to save yourself from being vulnerable towards them. Of course, we are talking about heterosexual couples here. The same goes for homosexual couples, that um, uh, if your partner, man or, or male or female, is trustworthy enough, that has to do with how you grew up and how you were taught about connectivity through the relationship of your parents and through the relationship of each of your parents with you. Um, 
it's true that especially nowadays in 2021 in modern era that we have a spiritual crisis we also have an economic and um, uh, health crisis but we all have in all the planet spiritual crisis in some areas most and some areas less in western civilization especially in countries where there is um, peace and uh, they, they are not at war and they don't have any major economic issues then people start to um, have uh, um, it's more easier it's easier to see the uh, the ethical issues and the existential issues that happen in a society if you have a society where people fight for their freedom and they fight for their life they don't have any time to have any existential questions if you have a society that there is uh, relative freedom and relative peace and people are relatively well financially then uh, uh, it's easier to see and foresee existential crisis and ethical crisis i think that in our times in modern times the years we live now we have a, a big problem with humanitarian values and i think that all over the world there are too many people who have decided to go away from their traditional values to go away from their spiritual values to go away from their religion values and they have not been able to replace these values with humanitarian values in order to have a purpose in life and in order to have a guidance, uh, to have spiritual guidance. You need to believe in something. If you don't believe in religion, you need to believe in humanity. If you don't believe in your um, country's regime, you need to believe in justice. If you don't believe in, um, in capitalism, you need to believe something else like sharing with other people. We have an existential crisis and a spiritual crisis in our times. So, given this, it's not easy to find a trustworthy person to make a relationship or make a life with. It's not easy. But, on the other hand, if you keep yourself afraid and keep yourself in a cage and not allowing yourself to trust anybody, you will not have a relationship either. We need to take a leap of faith. We need to take risks in order to have the opportunity to live our life, in order to have the opportunity to see and live a relationship and, and, and see in actions if a relationship is good enough, if a partner is trustworthy enough, and if we are happy and we are at home with that person. Given uh, the fact that some people do not trust other people, you, they cannot have a relationship. If you cannot trust your partner, if you have a, th a thing, if you have a problem with trusting and general problem, then you cannot give, you, you don't, you don't give your relationship any opportunity to grow, any opportunity to grow roots, any opportunity to blossom. You don't, you don't. You cut it at the beginning. You start. You are so afraid that you start uh, um, overanalyzing the negative aspects of your partner's character or your partner's behavior. You try to find uh, all the negative aspects of his or hers. You oversee his or her good qualities. You have, um, you, don't, you are not optimistic about your, the relationship. You are very pessimistic. If something good happens in the relationship, you are not able to enjoy it because at the back of your mind, you think, he will he or she will do something to show me that I was right not to trust him or not to trust her. You need to be able to take a leap of faith in order to have a relationship and maintain a relationship. And giving a leap of faith, trusting somebody doesn't mean that you become a victim. It doesn't mean that you can forgive any kind of bad behavior. You trust somebody, but at the same time, you keep your eyes open, you keep your ears open, and if you see any danger, any emotional or physical danger, if you see any red flags, you uh, pay attention to it and you try to understand what is really happening. But when you have trust issues, your radar, your gut instinct is not working well. You cannot, your gut instinct is giving you false alarms. 
Every person you will, need, you will meet in your life, man or woman, every relationship you will make, your partner, your perspective partner, will have also a bad characteristic, not only positive characteristics. There is no, um, there is no person on earth who is perfect. All of us, we have our good side and our bad side. All of us have good aspects of our character and personality and bad aspects of our character and personality. What is important, though, in order to establish some basic level of trust between two people that they form a new relationship is for both of them to be open to change and be open to improving themselves and improving their relationship. And in this case, the man who sent the email to me, he started therapy and he started to improve himself and he started to focus. He started focusing on his own ailments. If uh, his girlfriend is watching this video, he told me, you make the video and I will send it to her and she will watch it. I will give you this uh, adv piece of advice. You can either take it or leave it. Okay, I'm sorry for intruding your privacy. All that I've said is general. Do not apply to you because I don't know you. I don't know your situation. All I know about you is what your boyfriend wrote to me. So I'm being totally subjective and not objective on this issue. But if you find yourself to have difficulty trusting any man in your life due to the fact that you grew up in that environment where your father was untrustworthy, please, my dear, please give to, your to yourself the gift of psychotherapy. Give yourself the solace of going into therapy. Going into therapy will help you revisit your childhood traumas, will help you make peace with yourself, make peace with your father, and make peace with men in general. Not all men suck. Not all men are untrustworthy. Not all women suck. Not all women are untrustworthy. There are people in this, on this planet, in this era, that they have spiritual uh, strength, People who try and strive daily for uh, becoming better uh, versions of themselves. People who are humanitarians. People who have the spirituality to understand that they are only humans. And unless they try to improve themselves, the world is not going to be improved no matter what. Please give yourself the gift of psychotherapy. Either you decide to stay with this man or not. I'm not telling you to do this for the sake of your boyfriend so that your boyfriend can be with you. No. I don't know your boyfriend. I don't know you. I don't know your relationship. I know nothing. All I know is that if you give yourself the gift of psychotherapy, you will be able to enjoy life better and make decision, decisions about your life choices based on facts and not on your fears. I wish you the best. Have a nice weekend, everybody. See you next Friday with our weekly video in English. Bye.